Oh, is that what you're yelling at me about? Okay, welcome back, everybody. It's the Nick and Joe show <laughs> right here. Joseph is busy scolding me about trying to get a, a little blurb in on our chat before we go back on air, and I was about two seconds too late. Anyway, uh, we were talking before about, well, <clears throat> about uh, we hinted at a story out of Toronto. Huh? Now you see, my my mic wasn't I, on. I, so I'm you, confused. You, you you're confused because my mic wasn't on, and so I said, I said, what are you talking right. about, Nick? Me scolding you, and you heard me through the microphone because we could talk to each other, ladies and gentlemen, off air. <laughs> but because my mic wasn't on, Nick is hearing me, but you're not hearing me, and now I've confused him totally. <laughs> Uh, this is what happens. It's All live, right. it's live All right. radio, ladies so and gentlemen. From the top. Okay, here we go. Gotta love it. From the top. Welcome back to the Nick. Does it matter to you from a decidedly conservative point of view? With something you won't get almost anywhere else in the Great White North. All right. Oh, and and white well, and the Great White to... North is exactly what it's been the last few days here. Oh, man, I'm so sick. I'm sick of snow already. See, I like snow. I do, really, on a postcard. I pull it out of my wallet, I look at it, say, yep, that's snow, put it back in my wallet, and stick it back in my pocket. <laughs> anyway, that said, uh, we've been hinting at this story in the first segment about a guy by the name of Skelly. Let me just pull his story up. Story up. I'll give you the whole, the whole rundown. Let me read about three paragraphs. Police have laid nine charges after Toronto. This is from, where did I get it from? CTV News, real trustworthy source. Police have laid nine charges after a Toronto barbecue restaurant openly flouted public health restrictions prohibiting on-site dining for a second straight day. Officers showed up at Queen Elizabeth Boulevard location of Adamson, yeah, that's right, Adamson Barbecue at around 11 a.m. on Wednesday after owner Adam Skelly reopened the business, despite Toronto Public Health having formally ordered his closure for allowing customers to eat inside one day prior. Okay, and it goes on that he is charged uh, and he will have to face have his day in court in March. Uh, I'll give you the, March 19th is when he has to answer to these charges. Uh Based on what I've seen of this guy, I wouldn't be surprised that he'll open again tomorrow. Randy Hillier, uh, is he an independent now? He is. I, he's Joseph? Yeah, he is. I thought so. Um, he's an in, independent member of Queen's Park. Right, of the Ontario member legislature. member of the Conservative Party. Right. Yes, that's what that is for the, those people not from Canada who don't know what Queen's Park is. Okay. Anyway, uh, he is going to join uh, Adam tomorrow. It would be very interesting to see how this all plays out because are they going to arrest the sitting member of Queen's Park as well? Well, if the law means anything, they probably will. Uh, but knowing Randy, uh, that would necessarily be something beyond him. Uh, <clears throat> but I think this, this story, what's more important about this story than the story itself is that it it suggests that people have kind of hit the wall and there is a lot of lockdown burnout that people are tired of being told what to do and how to do it without seeing any real results i mean every time we're told you know you better buckle down first of all there's the hypocrisy that always flows you, you, somebody will say, uh, some government official or some leader somewhere will say, don't get together over the holidays, and then they'll get on a plane or a train or, or a car, and they'll do exactly what they just told us not to do. Most famously, the prime minister did that in East, at Easter. He said, no, no, don't gather for Easter. And what did he do? He gathered his family for Easter. So there's the do as I say, not as I do. That's wearing on people. I think that uh, running around having to put up with these masks, I haven't met anybody who likes them. I, I know a lot of people wear them out of fear, um, you know, and some people do it because it's the only way they, they think they can keep their business open. And I think Mr. Skelly has just hit, on a, hit a nerve here, and people are responding to it. And I think you're going to see more and more of this. And if I can borrow a line from Star Wars, from the original 
uh, episode four, when um, when the princess is marched before the commander of the Death Star, uh, or whatever ship she was taken on, she says, "The tighter you squeeze your fingers, the more the tighter you squeeze, the more of a slip through your fingers." And I think that's what's going to happen here. The the more the government clamps down, the more people are going to say, "Okay, you're going too far. We've had enough." This isn't working because the problem isn't going away. And they're not addressing where the problem really is uh, centered, and that's in long-term care and people with depressed immune syndromes, which is something people like you and I, Joseph, have been saying since day one, that it's the elderly and the infirm, those who, people who have AIDS, those people who have um, uh, cancer treatments for, for leukemia, just as an example. They have no resistance to this. And when you add this to other underlying um, health conditions, they're great risk. But the rest of the population, the vast majority of us who don't have those problems, are really at no risk. You know, there's a the risk is I don't want to say at no risk, but very very low risk of having a serious negative outcome. Anthony Fury, the reporter for uh, I think it's the Ottawa Sun, one of the Sun papers. Or the sun chain, maybe I'll say it that way. Right, I think he's a columnist. Did a great video today. I just right. watched it before. I think he's a he's columnist. He's a columnist? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I know he works for the sun chain. But he did a, about a three and a half minute video wondering why people are not getting the information, uh, the latest information about how, you know, the new medications coming along, how much we're learning about the disease, how easy it is to treat people who we should be treating and in what order. And he does a really good job. So if people are out there listening, watch that clip. Okay, maybe I'll post it on my Facebook wall later or put it up on Twitter or something or on the, our, our show's Facebook page. And you can go there and watch Anthony Fury ask some very good questions. And it's the government's botching this because they're not addressing the root of the problem, which is long-term care for the most part. That's where the biggest spike in, in new cases are. That's where the biggest death toll is. And it's no wonder these people are, some of them are in their 80s and 90s. It doesn't take much when you're that age to tip the scale and, you know, somebody's life comes to an end. So it's just, there's a lot of people out there who are just ready to, to, to throw their hands up in disgust and say, we got to do something different because we can't go through another lockdown like this, and we certainly don't want to continue with these kind of restrictions on what we do every day. Yeah. Now, you know, I, 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 I've been a critic of of the government's response in terms of how they've locked things down and that. And but early on, early on, you'll recall Nick when. Everybody else was up in arms. I was giving people, governments and government officials, the benefit of the doubt. And I was saying, you know, uh, we, we early on, we didn't know a lot of what we know today. Um, and so you know, when, when they took the action that they did, it was probably the wrong things to do for the right reasons. So give people the benefit of the doubt, okay? But we know so much more about these vi the virus now. We know where it's prevalent, which, as you've pointed out, is long-term care facilities. Um, and yet, the government still wants to, uh, the, these guys still want to do things, so locking the lockdown, okay? Uh, uh, and particularly in restaurants. And look, um, I'm just following what they're doing in Los Angeles right now in California, uh, but the, there's a, the Restaurant Association in Los Angeles actually took the government to court um, saying that the government had an obligation to show the evidence that the uh, in fact the the um, the virus was being spread through exposure uh, to uh, uh, through exposure th through these restaurants uh, and the judge actually ruled that um, it that the they wanted an injunction preventing the government from shutting them down. The judge ruled that they were not going to get an injunction because they themselves had not come to court with evidence showing that it's not restaurants, which I thought was an outrageous position of the judge. I think that, you know, when you're looking for injunctive relief, I think it's the 
you you maintain the status quo if possible, uh, and if there's no uh, reason, uh, evidence uh, presented by uh, the government uh, uh, in support of their decision to lock down, close down these restaurants, then uh, then you know they shouldn't be permitted to do it by uh, by law. But you if know, I can just that's, jump that's, in that's for a little... second, Joseph. Isn't that the same thing? L let me just make this comment here, and you can continue. But isn't what you're suggesting the same thing as being guilty until you're proven innocent? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's one way of, of, of putting it. If you want to frame it that way, you could, um, uh, because it's it's more or less a parallel sort of situation. But look, um, there is no evidence that the virus is being spread in restaurants, okay? Uh, and, you know... It's driving me crazy, uh, and and if there is evidence, look, we're all uh, responsible, more or less responsible citizens. Show us the evidence, and we'll react accordingly. But that's not what's happening. And then you get situations where, and it, this is just driving me crazy, Nick, uh, where in Manitoba, again, like they did in Ontario in the springtime, they shut down businesses except for essential businesses. And the essential businesses are more or less the ones that sell groceries. Okay, and that actually makes sense. If you're gonna, if you're gonna shut down businesses, you have to at least allow grocery stores to remain open because people have to buy food. Okay, so then along come- They have to eat, that's right. Okay, so now, so grocery stores get to stay open. But here's the question you have to ask yourself. First of all, if, if going to buy shoes is dangerous then surely the danger is the same for buy for a shoe store that it is for a grocery store because it's not the type of store it's not what the customer could purchase that's really the problem it's the customer behavior and uh, allegedly allegedly i'm not making a great statement here that customer behavior is causing problems. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying that that's the point that they would be making. So if you're if you're not going to shut down grocery stores and you're going to rely on the good sense of responsible citizens to, you know, wear a mask, okay, if, if, if that's what you want them to do, fine, wear a mask. Stay socially distant, fine, that's okay. Limit the number of people per square foot in the store. Those are things we could do, and that's what they're doing in grocery stores. Why are those measures okay in grocery stores, but they're not okay in a shoe store or in a clothing store? Now, let me go one step further, okay? And that is to say, now we're going to look at Costco and Walmart, both of which get to remain open because they're selling groceries. Okay, so now you have a, co a store like Best Buy, or the source or any of these places and they're going why shouldn't we be able to open when you could go to to uh, uh costco or to to walmart and buy computer equipment at either of these places uh and uh, but you can't buy computer equipment at, at office depot or staples or any of these places somehow or other they have to stay closed so that that it's an interesting thing now I was listening to terrestrial radio this morning Nick and that subject came up